Good morning, everybody. How are we doing this morning? Mackenzo is in the chat. Welcome in, sir. Glad you could join us this morning. You will have to excuse my voice a little bit. Woke up uh, not quite feeling 100%, so let me... See if I can clean up my audio just a little bit there. Hopefully that sounds a little better for you guys. All right, let's get some game sounds. We are back on Red Lily Farms this morning. My sim dashboard, for whatever reason, is not working. I don't think we need to sleep. All right. Where did you decide to work now? Sim dashboard's working now. I'm happy. Let's go streaming. We are at the house, just waking up, just headed out, and we're going to see. We can take the pickup, and I believe we've got some fuel here. We're going to cruise over. Get me just a little sip of the magic bean water this morning. And looks like we might have to run to town and fill this tank up. So how is everyone doing this morning on a fabulous Sunday morning? so great you could start your week off with me I do appreciate it um, and with this field being done as we learned last time on this map you do want to have a healthy respect for the traffic so we did advance uh, after last time understand bear understand we did advance the time, so we've got some weeds growing here. Might have to get a spray and machine, get those taken care of. But for right now, today, we're going to focus on a little canola harvest. But we are going to... Oh, oh, careful. Back roads here are a little, a little sketchy for us sometimes. That's the one we want. I believe there is one somewhere in the neighborhood of that place. What is going on now? Why can't they? Let's get the tailgate up so we don't wreck that. How come I can't look around? That was a weird little glitch. Oh well. Thing wouldn't let me look around until I got out of the pickup. Whatever. We'll chalk it up to a 1.9 patch glitch and move on with our lives. So. Hmm. 
come I thought that was a fuel place? Mr. DJ's Club, good morning, sir. How are you doing? We are cruising around on Edgewater trying to find a fuel station. I know, a little red Audi. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I could have swore. They usually tell us where the uh, fuel stations are. It's up there in the north. Excellent. Well, go for a little ride this morning. Yep. I did just pull out in front of that guy. I am doing well this morning, DJ. Doing well. Happy as could be. I got coffee, I got farm sim, and I got a stream. Life really does not get better than this. And again, that's weird. Oh, hey, look at there. Stream Elements is even going to join us this morning. Apparently he overslept and missed the alarm. run up to grab some fuel shouldn't take too long. I suppose we could jump over to the swather and get him rolling. Whoop. My driving isn't too good this morning, I apologize. So... That is filling up. We will jump over. We've got our spray. There we've got this guy, and I do believe I've got a course set up and ready for him. Now I'm not sure what happened, but I noticed this yesterday when I was setting up. Somehow, the back axle of this swather turned white. not sure why but we are going to try see how this guy does whoop 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 no nope, 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 nope. we do not want him to go to the first point try him on the Apparently he has to cut the other way around. So we'll get him going there. All right. So let's try it this way. Hopefully he doesn't pick up too much junk along the edge. Beautiful. Alright. So he's going to run along the edge, do his thing. We'll jump back up. We've got our fuel. We'll head down to the combines and the tractors. 
get those guys going. Oh, I bet we could use follow me to get some of that stuff up there, can't we? I bet we can. Shake your pointed little heads. Yep, yep, yep. will cruise down here to the bin site get our oh let's see how do we want to do this I think I think I can do it this way blinker on. Didn't even know it. Alright. How do we start this buggy again? M. That's right. Okay. So we've got fuel going. Just look pick up idle there a minute. Now, did I have my... No, I don't have the header trailer over here, do I? Because we just drove around. We just ran it up here with the header on, didn't we? We did, we did. So I'm gonna lift that baby up. into our versatile. We'll get some fuel. And this thing does fuel rather slowly. Alright, he's working along there. We did merge. Um... Eight, five, and ten together. So all of this green here is going to be one big canola field that we're going to try to get cut today. Now, I don't remember. There's 40, 25, and 5. Bigly, that is right. So there's 45 and 25 is what, 60 something? 75 acres, right? That's 65 and the 5, so that's 75 acres of canola. So um, we will get a little bit of grass in these windrows as he cuts across our boundaries. We'll get those boundaries plowed out um, after the crop is off. So, we did we've got our lime spreader there behind the truck 
We've got our big Borgo cart and toolbar. We've got our pickup head. We've got the sprayer in the shed. I believe the last thing we need is a roller. Is that right? And then we'll be ready to go. Okay. Combine is fueled up. So we're going to go. We'll go up and grab our pickup header. And we might see if we can get the truck to follow us. I don't know if that's going to work or not, but we're going to try it. And we'll head up to the canola field with that once we get going. Can't decide if I want to try this thing on course play and see how it does or not. So I had the opportunity this week, uh, met with a gentleman I used to work with who's very familiar with these cleaner and ideal combines, and he was telling me, I don't know what you guys are watching this on, or if this even interests you or not, this little round yellow scroll wheel on the joystick. Um, you use... I believe it's this button here swings the auger out and then once it is out you can use this little scroll wheel if you push the wheel it'll activate the um, the flow of grain into the cart or the semi or whatever what did we hit oh ran into a pole good job um, and then once it's going, you can use that scroll wheel to walk the auger back and forth to uh, fill up your cart. So your cart driver or your truck never has to move when they're alongside you. Which I did not know, but I found it really cool. They are... Gleaner and Fent are one of the only companies that do that. Why? Can I not look around? That's going to get real old. I suppose I'm going to have to hit... Swing around and come in the other way. these guys here okay so I'm gonna jump over here to the big truck Get him rolling. I do wish we could get that figured out in Farm Sim to where the um, gear shifting would actually work for the big trucks. Um, I do think it would be fun to be shifting away as you're driving here, so. Okay, so we're going to try a control F. Do I not have it in here? I must not have it in here. Okay. Well, 
guess we'll drive them up one at a time. Ooh, a little rough edge there. It's okay, Big Scab is not paying attention. So here we are in for a little ride. At 19 miles an hour, I should have put the, uh, should have bought a trailer to haul this combine up there with. Might have to look at doing that. We do have a little bit of money left in our account. That is for lime. We know we have to lime everything this fall, so we will. Um, that's why there's an excess amount of money there. Uh, I will probably do some of that off camera just to keep the stream moving because nobody wants to see me do that much lime for that long. We should have given our gleaner a bath. That's what we should have done. This thing is filthy. Even the cab is filthy. Mike Mitchell would be so disappointed in us. But I don't believe we have too far to go. And this guy does have a course. Yep, exactly, Mac. Uh, one of those, some of that type of stuff, just, it's just as easy to do it off camera. And I'll be honest, I love playing the game regardless of whether I'm streaming or just have a little while. Good morning, Mr. Eric the Crazy Viking. Welcome in, sir. Thanks for joining us. How are things in... Norway? Is that where you are? Good morning, why not? Thanks for joining in. We're going to get this windrow here picked up. Just make sure I am not leaving a windrow behind because I don't want to. Good, good, good. Glad you're here. Glad you're feeling well, doing well. You're right, Mark, it is. We're going to pay the elves to come out and clean it up. 500 bucks for a detail, absolutely. Oh, so much better, isn't it? So much better. Why am I not... Yeah, these guys are angry. Get angry get in their way these guys this guy this traffic is nothing to uh nothing to play around with these guys are actually they got horns that honk and everything it's crazy so all right now we got turned around maybe i'll be able to harvest some canola now We'll see. There we go. Set up for this corner a little bit better. Good morning, Mr. Jake Deb. Welcome in. Welcome in. 
Thanks for joining us this morning. Hoping you're having a good Sunday so far. All right. Good, good. Sure here. It's looking good. Thirteen percent. Perfect. All right. So we are going to park him for a bit. Our Macadon is just cutting away there. We will run the truck up. Get a rolling. Mr. Jason PA Plowboy is here as well this morning. Welcome in, sir. Thanks for joining us this morning. Appreciate you stopping by. Hopefully things are well out on the East Coast this morning. Absolutely, spring is in the air, that is for sure. So I think we'll just leave this guy here on the edge of the road till we get a little bit more of an open cut there. And let's see. How are we doing on fuel in this guy? Oh, he's great. Perfect. We'll just let him sit there. Mock's got two seasons, winter and summer. Jake Depp's got that's more, more 12 seasons. <laughs> well, in Montana, depending on who you talk to, if you talk to the uh, the one crowd, we have ski season and three months of really poor skiing. If you talk to the rest of us, we have 11 months of cold and one month of really beautiful weather. So, um... I had to make a little road trip up to uh, northern Montana. Uh, was a few hours away from Mr. Dirt Farmer, but a little closer than I normally am. And what is going on now? Why aren't we starting? There we go. And uh, on that road trip, the uh, state flower of Montana orange triangle, some uh, highlighted uh, traffic cone uh, has sprung, so we know spring is close because the uh, state flower is in full bloom. So, we'll get this guy topped up with fuel, not that he needed it, but... All right. Let's roll on up. Whoop. Easy there. 
there, does there? That's right, we can't turn super short with this one. Alright, let's get some beacons going. I I don't know, Bear. I may uh, we may have to agree to disagree on that one. Um I agree that you can put more clothes on when you're cold. Um but oof. When it's cold all the time. In the summer it's nice up here cuz when it does get super warm in the summer, at night it does cool off. Night you can open up the house, open up the windows and doors and get the house nice and cooled off for the next morning, but so, <laughs> second full <ball>, second. <laughs> yep, that sounds a lot like here, Jake Depp. Sounds a lot like here. <laughs> true, Mock. True. That is frowned upon. All right. Does the gameplay feel very choppy to you guys? Because on my screen that I play on, it feels very choppy. My frame rates are just fine. And they haven't moved. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. But on the stream side of things, it looks nice and smooth. Okay. Thanks, Mock. Appreciate the feedback, buddy. All right. Oh, before I get too far going here, I better slip back over here and shut the pickup off. There we go. I put the uh, fill limit alarm mod on here, so hopefully that helps us not. Run the tank over too much. Good morning, Mr. Sim guy, or should I say good afternoon, sir? Welcome in. Thanks for joining us. Ah, okay. Well, like I said, it just it just looks super choppy to me. So but that could be a me thing too. So Morning, I farmer Steve. Welcome in, sir. Appreciate you stopping in. Hopefully, you're doing well. We're just up here, Edgewater, Saskatchewan map. Red Lily Farms, harvesting some canola. I have not, uh, Mackenzo. I will try that after the stream. Clear that out, fly around everything. That is a great idea. I should have done that yesterday. So. Alright. 
you guys haven't already, feel free to give us a like if you're enjoying it. There is our 50% beep. Woohoo! That's going to be really handy. I like that. So, um, but, uh, yeah, the likes, the clicks, the bells, the subscribes, they all help the channel out, help us get found again, so. We do appreciate the support here at Big Sky Farms. It is, it is. farm sim nerd here, but I am just thoroughly enjoying the heck out of this cleaner combine. It's kind of become my new favorite mod as of late. Uh, I used to farm, uh, I used to farm the taters there, Mach. Um I don't anymore. Um, I actually worked for, um, worked for a family that grew seed potatoes for about three years. Um, now I just help uh, a couple of different guys out during fall harvest. So that would be our 80%. So if we had a green cart driver, we'd throw our auger out, let them know we're close. But now at least it gives us a good idea. I'm liking... Get a decent yield off of this field. I like it. Oh. Not a problem, Mackenzo. I enjoy the work. So. This, uh. I'm just loving this map. In cab driving with the wheel and pedal set up. Okay, so we're going to back up just a little bit, throw the pipe out, we're going to shut the separator off so we don't shake the combine apart, and we're going to do a little bit of adjusting here as we go through. Whoops. There we go. Clean this up for us just a little bit. There we go. Come on, come on. I am doing great, Sim Guy. Sorry, I did not see your message earlier there. Just back reading through chat. I am doing well this morning, man. We're just living the farm sim dream today. We 
had a good day yesterday just hanging out with the family so Don't even worry about it, Mackenzo. Don't even worry about it. I, uh, I grew up on a dairy farm. And we did dairy and small grains, all that good stuff. Um, and then I actually went and was a paramedic for about 10 or 12 years. Um, on an ambulance, on a fire department for quite a while. Um... And then, unfortunately, at that job, my position was eliminated, which left me in a bit of a lurch. Um, so there was a farm family that I was working for part-time, but they took me on full-time. The, uh... schedule there became a little bit too hectic as my wife uh, started coaching and... Our girls started swimming, and so we um, started looking for a different job at that point, and that is when I um, started at the equipment dealership, and then a year ago, actually it'll be a year ago on Tuesday, um, I started with the current company I am. Um, we make blockage monitoring equipment for air drills, fertilizer spreaders, and we're set to release a new product this spring for sprayers. Yes, you were a combat medic, Mach. I remember talking about that in one of your streams before, very briefly. So, thank you, and thank you for your service, sir. It is much appreciated. So, um, but my current position allows me to travel around some and see all sorts of different uh, equipment different sizes different shapes um, and that has been very very cool experience the travel gets a uh, it's pretty it can be a struggle sometimes with the family and everything why there we go um, but it's working out well and life is good. It is, it is. And um, sitting here on the 19th of March with, um, I still have a couple of feet of snow at my house. Uh, most of northern Montana just got hit with another blast of snow. Um, most of North Dakota is under snow as well yet. Um, southern Canada. So it's going to be a pretty late spring. So that's uh, um, that'll be a it'll be a push when that guys do get uh, the snow melted off and the guys get in the field. It'll be uh, it'll be a hectic run and dash, pushing hard. So um, it'll be it'll be a ride as always for us. So. So I think as long as as long as the phone stays pretty calm, I just have one day trip this week. Um, and then next week I will be down in Boise, Idaho for a couple of days um, installing some of our new technology. So we'll see how that all goes.
Exactly. Exactly, PA. Um, I will definitely do that. Uh, definitely do that, Mock. Um, we do have a fair bit of our um, fertilizer and air seeder technology down there. Um, and I am really good friends with the rep that is down in that country. So there's a good chance I will end up there. I just don't know when. But when I do, I will definitely let you know. And that is true, Jason, because uh, last year at this time, there was a bunch of guys across uh, North Dakota and Montana that were going already at this time last year. And then everybody got shut down um, the middle of April with all that snow. So. So last year's spring went from a nice, cool, calm, easy going to we had a, almost a month of just nothing. And then everybody was going and hitting. So it was it was a good time. It was a good time. So now we know we can watch a little closer. And we should easily make the road. So we'll load right along the road. Which is conveniently always where you break down and always where you have an issue. So don't ask me how I know. I would love to just take out this big old looping spring here, but that's got water in it, and that's kind of a those are a little tougher to smooth out when they got the water in them. So we'll just leave it, farm around it, and enjoy the curves. do it for us we are going to back up just a little bit so we can get the tractor and cart next to us shouldn't be in anybody's way that way sneak across is made so oh there 
it is. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I know I shouldn't drive over my windrows, but in the essence of time and good content creation, Back to it we go. Do 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 On our Spud series, which hopefully we will be streaming Tuesday night, uh, we're getting some spuds in the ground, getting the crop ready for next year. Uh, got a video coming out hopefully Monday that uh, we do a little bit of uh, tillage rash tillage radish oil seed radish there we go plant a little of that get a little of alpha planted as well so be looking for that hopefully Monday I got it all queued up I just got to get it uploaded and we're ready to go Hodge one, good morning, sir. Welcome in. Thanks for joining us today. Hopefully your Sunday is going well. Top of the hour, wonder what we're paying the swathers wages. Yield is great, Hodge. We've also got, give me just a second here, uh, we've got the bushel plus on there, that's that little gray box down there. Um, so we've got our combine finely tuned, and yield has been great. We're looking at getting almost, we're going to be almost 900 bushels on just this outside round. So I don't think we'll quite get that third unload in before we get back to the start of the field, but it's been it's been fabulous so far. So So 
Yeah, Hodge, I have zero complaints with how this uh, swathing and pickup head goes. So, I uh, just for the, the different style of gameplay, I would do it. Um, I would do it if, if, even if there wasn't the yield bump. So, and I did come across a Facebook page last night um, that there sounds like somebody is working on a swathing add-on that this mechanic can be added to any map um, no release date um, definitely worth the investment for sure um, but no release date or an official announcement or anything on that I just saw that they were um, the, the BC Bueller and him were working on creating that so um, very cool uh, to see that come out so And yeah, we'll just keep going around that way. Oh, we don't have it running, so excuse me just a moment. There we go. I think I have that, what did we call it earlier, uh, Jason, the, the fake string, fake string, fake spring, false spring. Good morning, farmer, farmer. How are you today, sir? Welcome in. Uh, that false spring cold, I think, is what I'm getting. So, woke up this morning, the nose is running like crazy, so... fashioned way. You know, I just thought of this. If I would have put follow me in here, the grain cart would just follow me around the field and he wouldn't be so far away every time. Hmm. Oh, there's a thought for us, huh? Yep. Can understand that, farmer, farmer. But, uh, the cold is always hard on those babies, for sure. So, I, uh, guy in our small community here in southwest Montana he uh, he raises bulls or you know he sells bulls in the spring um, but he calves out his herd um, basically between Christmas and Valentine's Day he's got his herd synced to calve out during that time period and he said he's lost way more to mud and sickness in the spring if he moved his you know when he because he did cab out in march um, and he said he lost way more to mud and spring and disease like that in the early spring 
than he ever did to um, Frost. So I always thought that was kind of interesting. Um, I am doing well myself, uh, save for the fact that I just drove over a whole bunch of windrow. So we're going to jump over to our trek to here and see if we can just... Eh, that does not look shallow enough to try to get through that. Yep, exactly, PA. So, now I think... We're just going to sneak back this way. Yep. When, uh, when we sold out our dairy and switched over and just did beef cows, um, we kind of converted some of our old barns to are waking up for the morning so let me see here where were we uh yes so we converted some of our old dairy barn um so we kind of had a warm place to put some of the mamas and the babies um when they um on some of those bitterly cold days that we had here so wasn't ideal trying to change everything over but in the end it did work out fairly well for us Am I any worse close to my combine, or am I just driving through the field, wasting diesel fuel? Yep, that was kind of his... Uh, the, the Angus guy there, that's kind of his thought too, is that they uh, kind of made him pretty hardy calving him out when it was super cold. Um, and that's one of the one of the marketing things he used. You know, his his calves were, were born out on the range and that's where they were born and bred to be. So, but, and he's been doing it that way for probably close to 20 years now. Um, and he's he's very successful so our third unload yep yeah those those first calf heifers can be they can be tricky sometimes can't they so I didn't do a lot with that because about the time we sold out the dairy was about the time I went to paramedic school and went on a different little vein but I was always available to help uh, my dad and my uncle um, and but I didn't do a whole lot of the calving in the winter but yeah every once in a while I'd get a phone call to come and help the, the first calf well, 
Jones. So. Is anybody watching, keeping an eye on the Madness, the March Madness tournament? Saw there was a couple of good upsets uh, first couple of days of the tournament, which is always pretty cool. Oh, pulling three of them already. Yeesh. That's rough. How, uh, if I may be so bold to ask, how many do you have uh, total there, Farmer Farmer, for first calf heifers I see your comment there. <laughs> Weight plus toothpick legs. That is pretty much the definition of a newborn cow if I've ever seen one right there. So, 22 and 6 are done. Very cool. Good luck to you for the rest of them, for sure. So, I know when I uh, sit down to a nice steak or a good burger in a restaurant, I am appreciative of your efforts. So, Yep, exactly. So, and some of ours mock uh, the the dairy cows, the Holstein cows were typically taller um, and a little bit leaner than most uh, uh, most beef uh, breeds. And so, some of those calves would be really tall and those spindly little legs, and they'd be out there wobbling around. So. There we go. All right, I think we'll do this corner like we did the last one. It seemed to work fairly well. have to say I haven't disconnected the header in quite some time. Aren't you guys proud of me? <laughs> oh. I think yeah, we'll just do this one the same way.
Sometimes it's easier to make that big old looping corner than try to make those tight ones and then you miss and then you gotta back up and all that fun stuff. <laughs> it does, it does, especially when you're expecting to pick it up at the end of the row and instead it falls off and goes sliding all over and so Oh yeah, I go back to when we uh if you go back in the stream there, farmer farmer way at the beginning there, uh or at the start of this field, I did it about three or four times in a row there, so but Kind of curious where we are in the big wide world here. We are definitely going to have to work on our. Uh oh, is our swather stuck? Looks like he might be. Uh, work on our soil fertility stuff in the over the winter. Make sure we get our nitrogen levels up and everything else. Cause yeah. That big red spot right in the middle of the field is not good. So, oh well, we'll get her done. It's not the, uh, it's not the best, but it's not the end of the world either. So, nothing that can't be fixed with a little nitrogen and a little lime. So. see oh I guess I was not paying enough attention here I did not realize this thing would have a 400 bushel grain tank so we've got way more bushels than what I thought. And I'm thinking that's going to fill us right there. Let's back up a little bit. And, yep, yeah, see, I told you guys. Let's see if we can get can you at least wait for me to get out of your way? My goodness, man. We'll let him get back to his thing. I'll have to look at that mod. I don't know what the deal is, why that thing changed color. So, alright. Let's go there, Mr. Versatile. Come on, mule. Come on, mule. Let's go. Six hundred and ten horses is strong Cummins power here in this thing. 
It's always the fun part about going up northern Montana. You see all the brands up there. Um, you see the Versatiles. You see the John Deere's. Um, there's a new dealer up there that's uh, working on getting Fent up there. So they got a couple of Fent combines. Just a little bit uh, down the road from them, you see a bunch of the Versatile combines. A little bit further down the roads, the green ones, the red ones. So always cool to see that. So. Oh, we're way up in the corner. I'm like, did we accidentally mow field nine too? I don't think it would let it, but you never know. You never, never know. Ah, uh, no, there is the boundary. Okay. Oh, combine operator parked in such a terrible spot. Goodness, what was he thinking? What was he thinking? All right. There we go. Okay. Right, Jason? So hard to find good help. Right. Good help is really hard to find. There's so many buttons on this thing, I don't know what to push. Alright. Make sure we're going forward. There we go. Roll that pipe in. Okay. Exactly. Exactly, Mackenzo. I wonder. That could just be one swath right there. Just let course play do its thing for right now. Let's think about jumping over to the swather. If I can catch him when he's up on this end, I might just come and cut that little strip there so I don't have to make a thousand different turns. We shall see. We shall see. Yeah, it's always kind of tough. When you've got a, a fairly decent uh, tractor that's at a, at a subpar dealership, that always kind of stinks. So um, I've not been around Versatile um, very much. I know they're older iron um, like our 935 that we've got on the Harrow down by the bins down there. Um, that era, they were a really good tractor. Um, and now I know they've got the Cummins engines in them. I don't remember what they do for a transmission. Um, but they've got fairly reliable um, and economical parts for them. Um, 
they're just not one of the mainstream brands, so nobody ever really gives them a good a good look. So um, it was cool to see in uh, Mackenzo's uh, Stone Valley series. He had the Versatile Combine going there, so it was definitely cool to see a, a different brand out there and him doing that. So that was kind of my idea with this series is um, having some of those off brands, the lesser known, the, the short line ones, if you will. Um, I know Gleaner's part of Agco, which is huge, um, but... It's not a not a well known, super well known brand. So, but side here for just a little bit. I think we might do that just for something just a skosh different. Where is that guy? around to where the swather is coming back up and when he gets back to the top we're going to hijack his swather we're going to come over here and get a few of the little bits he's missed Yeah, see, uh, see if we can find one of those. So, um, but what are we at? Fifty percent? Yeah. Well, we're waiting for the swather. We can. So, yeah, Hodge. I think that the versatile combine that I was talking about is in. Should be in the in-game mod hub, I believe. Let's back up. Come on. There we go. I do want the hood up. So they're not super... Like I said, they're not a super well-known brand. Oh, come on. Apparently our Versatiles had too much to drink this morning. He's got to lift his leg. I don't know. So... Well, if you get the chance, Farmer Farmer, I would definitely jump on the chance to try out a Fent. Um, dealer I worked for was a Fent dealer. Um, I was actually part of the committee that pitched Fent, or pitched to Agco why our dealership should get Fent. Um, and that was, that was a really cool experience. Um, but they are a very, very nice tractor. Um, they put good horsepower to the ground. They have the one and only CVT transmission in the world. Um, and most one of the most economical um, economical tractors out there. So they are a little spendy initially. I'll give you that. But the value for what you get is it's pretty much unbeatable anywhere else. So. Um, and Hodge, if I had that versatile combine in this 
save, I would show it to you in a minute, but I don't even have it in the mod list. So we're going to jump in here right along. Ooh. We lost all of the detail in our cab as well. Oh, huh. Might have to take a look at that and see what's going on there. So. Oh, well, that's right. We're on course play here, so we got to get him stopped. There we go. Whoa, whoa. I forgot this thing turns really quickly. So, as you can see here from our course play course, which I will get rid of in just a minute, um, you know, in real life, you would just take this and just cut it one big strip like we're going to do here rather than all these little short strips along here so that's why we took over here we're just going to cut these into some longer strips um, that we can a little more economical for the combine to pick them up so um, plus that and you guys get to see the uh, the Macdon here a little bit so think this Macdon could cut just a skosh faster if we wanted it to. I mean I'd have to adjust the just the cutting speed in the cat or in the mod itself, but Sounds good, farmer. Farmer, be safe out there. Keep them little babies warm. Thanks for stopping by. We do appreciate the support. Do we know, uh, Mackenzo, if you're still here, maybe you know, is Dirt uh, streaming this morning? I haven't got any notice or anything that he is. If he is, I don't want to go over top of him too long. Um, if he's not, I'd like to go. A, I'd like to go a little while yet. If you guys are up for it.
Ashley. Oh, okay. He is going. Okay. I just wanted to make sure, so we'll uh, probably try to get these little windrows here picked up, and then we will be done for the day. So I think I should be able to fit most of this in one combine. So... That little guy. Oh, of course, had to be a bunch of grass in there, too. And what do we know? So. All right. You bet, McKenzo. Thanks for stopping by, joining us for the stream this morning. We will see you over in dirts here in just a little bit. We'll finish up here and I'll head over there myself. So. Uh, any of you other guys, if you haven't yet, um, go check out uh, Dirt Farmer. He uh, is a fellow Montanan. And he's got a great stream going on over there that he always does on Sunday mornings. So... Feel free to pop on over, check him out, and uh, go from there. Since we're not going to combine any more over here, we're just going to shut this guy down as well. So, all right, let's pick this up, curl our pipe in. Gonna go pick up these rows and call it a morning. Get it perfect. All right. <laughs> so, yeah, Dirt Farmer is a fellow content creator, fellow Montana, and fellow farmer. Um, and he is about a See, he's about a six-hour drive to get up to his place from where I live. So, um, and that's uh, kind of gives you an idea of the immensity of the state of Montana. You can drive for six hours north and still be in the same state. So, but he's got some good stuff going. He's got a, a good mix of um, farm sim content as well as real-life farming content. So, um makes it a double enjoyment for me to watch him so usually catch up on his uh on his farm and stuff in his weekly videos so Did I miss a little bit down there? Oh, I did. Dog biscuits. Oh, well. a nice match with that uh, Macdon header. It's 45 feet of header there. Um, 
and we've got a 45 foot straight cut for this combine as well. 40s? Maybe they're only 40s. I don't remember. So. Do, 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 do. Mm. Hogwarts alumni right here. Gryffindor house. Uh, anyway. Shows you how big of a nerd I am. Farm Sim and Harry Potter. Anyway. Uh, we may have to end the stream soon because I'm out of coffee. So... There is another cup full of coffee calling my name. I think we missed a little bit there, didn't we? Sure did. So, but I think... Well, I don't know if this will give us quite enough for a semi-load or not, but... This does give us a good chunk, so... That's my complaint. You get outside of this thing and up close, it gets super loud. Kind of quiet it down. We got to back up so far. So that's why we do a lot of in cab, or we try to. So. All right, I believe. That is going to where we are going to end the stream here on this little strip here. I do appreciate each and every one of you joining me this morning. Uh, gets my week started off great when I can do a stream on a Sunday morning. So we might try to do a few more of these as life moves along. But uh, thank you so much. We hope you enjoyed um, watching. We hope you will come back again soon. Until next time. Thanks for joining us. Take care. Be careful. Be smart. Be good.